Hi you guys, welcome to my channel. This is my first tutorial showing you how to create your own faux fur vest and actually dye faux fur. So watch how I turn this white and gray fur that I think is personally ugly into this beautiful ombre light gray and dark gray fur that I'm going to use for my vest. So for this part I filmed with my phone camera which is waterproof instead of my actual camera so pardon the film quality. There was a lot of water in this process and I didn't want to be clumsy. So you're going to fill up a large pot with water and in the water you're going to pour your bottle of liquid dye. I'm using Rit liquid dye and this bottle is from their new line called Dye More. This line is made to dye synthetic fabrics and if you don't know faux fur is a definitely synthetic fiber. The Rit Dye More definitely comes in a variety of colors. It only costs about $5. The directions are on the side of the bottle so you can always follow that you can either dye your fabric stove top like I did or do it in a washer you after you've done that you're gonna throw in your faux fur you're gonna mix it around because you need to be able to make sure the dye gets in all parts of the fur you don't want tie dye you want an actual you know fur color going on here so mix sometimes before I get smiles appears after you said some tears Sometimes we cloud our sunshine focusing and all our Now you see I've taken out my faux fur out of the pot. I let it sit in for about an hour. I put it under cold water because right now we're going to make sure the dye comes out because it's been set. The fabric has been set. So you make sure the water runs clear until you see no more dye anymore. So now the fabric is set. Make sure using a stainless steel sink or stainless steel tub so the dye doesn't mess with the sink. Once that's done, you just take your faux fur and let it dry over a clothing rack. Um, make sure you groom the hairs in the direction it needs to be going. I use like this old brush and just make sure the hairs are correct. Now we can get started making our fur vest. So you're going to need a sewing machine, a ruler, just a straight one would be fine. A curved ruler, but that's optional. You can always freehand. Scissors, paper and fabric, never mix them. An exacto knife that's also optional to cut your fur. Pins, of course, pencil, pattern paper, or you can make your own. Like here, I show you how to assemble multiple pieces of card paper or computer paper, tape them together, and make your own pattern paper. Or you can use newspaper. You'll also need about two yards of lining fabric, your faux fur, of course, two yards, and finally, a lightweight jacket that you own that fits you very well. So you're going to begin to lay your jacket flat the way I did here and you're going to take your ruler and copy the front edge of it. Then you're going to trace the side of it, which is what I do here. Then you're going to trace the shoulder. Then you're going to connect the shoulder to the side using a freehand curve or actual curve ruler like I did here. You're going to freehand a curve from the shoulder to the front or use a curve ruler like so. And this is how the final part should look like. You can extend how long you want your jacket to be. I made mine a little longer than my actual denim jacket and then I actually added the hem at the bottom. Also you're going to square off the edge like I did here so you can have that part for the back. Retrace this entire pattern because you're going to need one for the back. Make sure to label this the fur vest front pattern because this is going to be for your front pieces and you're going to only cut two. Also, you're going to cut off that curved part so you can finally have your front, which should look like this. Remember that pattern piece you had to trace because you're going to use it for the back soon? Well, this is when you're going to need it. You're going to put it to one side of your pattern paper. You're going to trace it around like what I'm doing here. I'm using a candle and a gel box to hold my paper down so it doesn't move around. You can be free to do anything you want. I'm just cleaning up my pattern that I'm tracing over. Now I'm going to flip it over to the other side and do the same thing. So basically we're trying to create one big pattern piece for the back so you don't have to cut two out. You cut one. You're going to call this the fur vest back pattern and you're only cutting one. So then you're going to take your front pattern and you're going to trace it again. But you're going to add half inch seam allowance on the side and the shoulder and a one inch seam allowance for the bottom. This is going to be your lining front pattern and you're going to call it fur vest lining front and cut two out. Repeat the same process for your fur vest lining back pattern. So 
So now I've placed my pattern pieces on top of my fur. Make sure you place it in the direction of the fur, which is going down. Um, I'm tracing my patterns with a contrasting chalk or marker. On my gray ombre, I used a red, but you couldn't see it on the camera, but here I'm using a white on a black. After you traced it, make sure you flip over the front pattern like I'm doing here. When it comes to cutting fur, you do not just want to cut it like regular fabric. Your job is to only cut the backing of the fur and not the hairs itself. See, I made sure I only cut the back so the hairs can stay as long as possible. So the best tool to use to cut your fur is an actual X-Acto knife or a blade because all it is doing is cutting the backing of the fur and making sure that the back is only cut and not the hairs of your fur itself you want the hairs of your fur to stay as long as possible like what I'm doing here and showing you here so here's how your fur pieces should look like once they are cut Now lay out your lining fabric and put, place it on fold. You're going to place your back pattern on the fold like I'm doing here. Then you're going to place your front fabric right next to it. Front, cut two. Back, you're only cutting one because it's on the fold. Right here I'm showing you how I place the back pattern on the fold. That's the fold of the lining fabric. And here are the lining pieces cut out. Now lay your fur pattern pieces like I'm doing here. You're going to lay the back pattern in the middle. Then you're going to lay the front patterns on the side of the back pattern. Then you're going to attach the side seams together like how I'm doing here. You're going to do that with your pins. You're going to start pinning them together. Make sure you push the fur inside as you're putting the seams and you put the pins going downward. Now you are ready to take it to the sewing machine. You're going to zigzag the edges of the side seams that you just pinned. So I used an overcast stitch, but you can also use a zigzag stitch. They all do the same. And here is the way it should look once the side seams are attached. Now here I'm showing you that you're going to lay the sides to the back and you're going to start to attach the shoulder seams together. The shoulder seams right there from the back to the front. Here I'm displaying how I pinned the shoulder seams here and I'm going to go to the sewing machine and sew that together. Once you sew the shoulder seams and the side seams, here's how the outer, which is the fur exterior should look like. Now time to sew your lining fabric. You're going to sew down the side seams in a half seam allowance with a straight stitch. After you sew the side seams, you're going to also do the shoulder seams, which is what I did ahead. And they all should be about a half inch seam allowance, which is what we did in our pattern piece. Here's how your lining should look like on the mannequin. Now we're going to throw the fur on top of it. Your job is to make sure you attach this the lining to the fur. Make sure to stitch your one inch hem allowance to your lining. And here's your stitched hem for your lining. 
Here I started to pin the lining to the actual furred part of the jacket. You're making sure the right sides are meeting together as you pin. You're going to pin the whole front and then after you pin the center front, you're going to also make sure you pin the armholes together. After I sewed everything together, I'm going to hand sew the hem, the hem of the lining to the back and then you should have a completed fur jacket. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe, especially if you want to see more from me. Also visit my website, www.hadassador.com. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Snapchat, and I can't wait to show you more. Bye!